thousands protesting in the streets against Israel. It's become a normal sight, a weekly event that drew 15,000 Hamas supporters and activists demanding an immediate and permanent ceasefire to the war in Gaza, a ceasefire to preserve the existence of the Hamas terror organization, despite the fact that organization has vowed to repeat their October 7th crimes against humanity until Israel is destroyed. The march comes just a day after the United States vetoed a UN Security Council resolution that demanded a ceasefire while failing to condemn Hamas for burning children alive and not affirming that Israel has a right to self-defense against terrorists that burn children alive. Well, for more on this, we are joined from London by Josh Rahm, journalist and broadcaster over there. Josh, one of the things that you've been on this show to discuss before are these massive weekly rallies, but we've seen them drop from a high of 300,000 to 15,000 now. Is there finally petering out? Is there a sign of a shift in consciousness in the public over there? I mean, one would hope that there is a shift in the consciousness um, within the public over here. However, according to social media, you know, I don't, we're not seeing that. Once again, the Metropolitan Police uh, put out a picture identifying um, a pro Palestinian protester saying that uh, this protester was carrying allegedly an offensive placard appealing uh, to the public to give more information to identify this person so they can speak to this person. Um, you know, once again, you know, just this week, the uh, the the, Poli the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign testified um, to the Home Affairs Select Committee, saying that you know these protests are largely peaceful, and we're si and, and you know thousands of Jews apparently are are taking to the streets alongside with us. However, you know the campaign against anti-Semitism is continuously identifying not just anti-Semitic placards, not just. Uh, not just people uh, holding placards calling for the genocide of Jews, but, you know, we're hearing on the streets there is only one solution, Intifada revolution. This is a direct chant calling for genocidal action against Jews within the state of Israel and calling for the elimination of the state of Israel. The, the organizers of the Palestinian Solidarity Campaign just this week within the Home Affairs Select Committee said, you know, that, that from the river to the sea chant, we we don't condemn it, we chant it. This is a chant calling for the extermination of Jews within uh, the, the area that goes from the Jordanian River to the Mediterranean Sea. And one would hope that, you know, the march is decreasing in size, that more people are seeing actually know these marches are calling for the genocidal chants against Jews within the state of Israel. But, you know, I think this does show that once again, every single week, 50, at least 50 15,000 Londoners want to make London a no-go area for Jews. Josh, I want to break down the demographics that we're seeing at these massive protests. Because when we saw those 300,000 people, it was some mix of a core of uh, migrants from the Arab world. You had progressive activists. You had a cabal and a cadre of low-information voters just chanting slogans that sound good. Is it still everybody involved? Or is this now primarily just the initial core of Arab world immigrants that have an ax to grind with the Jewish state just inherently? I mean, I think it's hard to say because I mean, I saw uh, one one of one uh, colleague of mine within the industry uh, going on one of these marches just this week as well on social media, or at least supporting the march on social media. I think you know, as we're going towards the Christmas holidays, the weather's getting cooler. When I say cooler, it's getting very, very cold within the United Kingdom. There were even reports of snow recently of some parts within the United Kingdom. So it might just be that some people just want to stay indoors due to the weather. But, you know, I, I still see on social media left-wing progressive activists still kind of advocating for a permanent ceasefire. And I think a lot of people see this as a left-wing cause to champion. Um, and it is a progressive, that people class it as a progressive cause to champion, not knowing the full details of Hamas and what they're capable of. But I also think this is a good time to also discuss um, 
you know, some of the progressive narratives that are being, you know, peddled out on social media. I don't think people talk about the Iron Dome enough. People don't realise that the only reason why Israeli cities like Haifa, like uh, Tel Aviv, even Jerusalem, why they're not like Dresden in World War II, like uh, Tokyo, like even the East End of London in World War II, is because the Iron Dome is protecting Israeli civilians. People point out, oh, this is an uneven even uh, war, look at the difference in casualties. That's only because Israel has invested billions of dollars of, uh, into this technology to protect their civilians, whilst Hamas wants to use the civilians within the Gaza Strip as uh, martyrs, as humanitarian, not humanitarian, as martyrs, as human shields. And people are not discussing that. And I think that's why left-wing activists are continuing on this crusade on social media. Partly is because they're ill-informed about the specifics and the nuances about this war and this conflict as a whole. And I know that we've discussed, just the two of us, just how ill-informed or ill-intentioned these activists tend to be. But the better question is, do they have any real effect on the world around them? Are politicians, decision makers, anybody of importance listening to them? Yeah, well, I, I think, you, you know, the fact that the government is still pledging to fund the Community Security Trust, you know, they very much recognise the threat that these activists have to the Jewish community in the UK and in London specifically. You know, I think the, the government has been steadfast in its support for Israel. You know, I think amongst the same amongst the same kind of trends of world leaders, I think that, you know, we've heard kind of statements about, uh, you, you, you know, kind of urging Israel to do more to protect civilian life in, in Gaza and all of that sort of stuff. But the government is remaining steadfast. I mean, you know, just this week when it came to the UN resolution, the UK government, they said the reason they are, are abstaining is because we cannot vote for a resolution that does not implicitly condemn the atrocities of Hamas that happened on October the 7th. So, you know, I think the government is steadfast in, in support for the state of Israel for its right to not only exist, but for its right to fundly defend, to fundamentally defend itself against the threat of terrorism. And also as well, you know, Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad are still prescribed terrorist organizations within this country. And it's clear from what the Metropolitan Police are saying, the fact that, they're tr that they are still trying to at least go to some lengths to identify pro-Palestinian protesters with what they call offensive placards, that does mean that you know there there's still at least some action being taken to uh, you know to counteract the, the the support for a terrorist a prescribed terrorist organization in this country. And Josh, we have less than a minute until our break, but I, I want to ask: Can they really maintain this energy forever? I remember when Ukraine was the current thing in the headlines, and all the activists were only talking about that. That's vanished completely. When is this going to vanish completely from the activist agenda? But this is the thing. The activists weren't really talking about that, not like how we've seen with this war, which that kind of raises the question once again, do they really care about, you know, uh, a two-state solution advocating for peace in the region? Or is this simply a progressive left-wing cause that they're jumping on the bandwagon on because it's something of a cool thing to be out there advocating for freedom for Palestine? That is the main question. I don't think we We've seen protests um, advocating for Ukraine, or like what we've seen on the scale of which what we've seen on this cause. And that is, I think, the main question that we actually have to take away from this. Definitely a good point there. Thank you very much, Josh, for helping us understand, or at least attempt to understand what goes through the mind of these activists, misguided though they seem to be.